Hello, I'm Joel Daring with the Volleyball Hall of Fame. We're speaking one-on-one -on -one today with members of the induction class for 2012. This is Volleyball in Perspective. I'm joined today by Jeff Stork. Welcome, Jeff. You're being inducted today for a tremendous career, perhaps remembered most as the setter for USA's 1988 Olympic gold medal team, but equally for two other championships leading up to the Seoul Games, the 85 FIV World Cup, the 86 FIVB World Championship, um, the Triple Crown, they like to call it. Uh, additionally, many of us in volleyball think of you first when we consider the popularity of the left-handed setter and the tremendous offense you produce yourself as an attack option for your team. It also seems you always were described as calm, cool, and collected. So let's start with that. Is that how you saw yourself as an international competitor? Yes. <laughs> no. no, I uh, I certainly enjoyed the game. Uh, I, I think I internalized things a lot. I try not to let things get to me, uh, but certainly, you know, those moments and those uh, uh, competitive environments, uh, I think it's best to keep you cool and uh, not to try to ride too much of the uh, emotion. Mm. Certainly there's emotion to the game, but, uh, you know, I, I was thinking most of the time, I think. Yeah. When did you start playing? What age and how did you get started in volleyball? You know, my first exposure was uh, as a 12-year-old in intramurals with my brother, who was a uh, student at Cal State Northridge, as a matter of fact. And uh, he was in intramurals. He asked me to come. I, I went. Uh, but that was just a short exposure. Uh, the actual playing started when I was in high school, actually, as an 11th grade, mm -hmm. uh, which in today's world, not starting until you're 17 is, is a little unusual. Um, but my brother was on the team. He asked me to come out, and I wasn't doing anything, so I said, sure. And, uh, you know, that was my first full-time experience on a team. How big was your family? You know, there was uh, six kids, and uh, it was a, uh, a lively household. <laughs> and uh, everybody had friends, so uh, the more the merrier in our house. I mean, there was always something going on in our household. Sports heroes growing up, was there anybody in particular? You know, uh, there wasn't too much on the volleyball side. Uh, I know that my father taught at uh, UCLA for 38 years, so, uh, and he was an avid basketball mm -hmm. player. And uh, so we did the wooden thing, and he had season tickets. Mm -hmm. And uh, of his, uh, his children, he would always take uh, one of us to a season game. So I, I got a little exposure to that. You know, professional sports here and there. I liked watching players as opposed to teams. Um, but uh, I like to participate a little bit more than watch. Mm. So you played at Pepperdine under Coach Marv Dunphy, and then obviously later on. But let's talk about Pepperdine and getting involved there. Tell us that story. You know, it, it can be a long story, but I'll try to make <laughs> okay. it short. Um, Marv and I met in Arlington, uh, Amarillo, Texas, at a USA uh, V Nationals. And uh, he was coming off his dissertation uh, at BYU. And uh, so he was looking to, you know, find some recruits to come into Pepperdine after returning. And uh, so I played on a team that was local to Los Angeles, and uh, so he knew that. And so he found out about me. He comes over and says, hey, let's talk. And uh, so I start to give him my phone number so that we can meet up. Uh, and the prefix to Topanga Canyon is 455. And uh, so I tell him my number's 455. And before I can finish, he says, wait a minute, you're from Topanga? And I go, kind of full of myself, yeah, what about it? I'm, <laughs> I, I'm from Topanga. He goes, I'm from Topanga. Wait a minute, do you know this? Do you know that? We start naming off a lot wow. of the same people. And it turns out he was the lifeguard at the pool I used to swim at in Topanga. Now, he's 12 years older than I am, but, uh, you know, we've had that kind of connection wow. ever since. So... You know, I know a few more stories than most wow. about his childhood. Hey. So <laughs> talk a little bit about, uh, you, you, you know UCLA is going to be one of those rivalries in your college days, and you had a lot of success as a player. I think got to some championship matches. Tell us about well, who were the key rivalries and just maybe some of your experiences from, from uh, you know, going after a title. You know, we, uh, when I was there, I, I played for three years. I was a graduate assistant for one year. And uh, the three years that I played, I was in the finals twice. Uh, unfortunately losing to a very good UCLA uh, team both years. Mm -hmm. And then as a graduate assistant, uh, we won that year. I think we beat USC in the finals. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was a quick turnaround at Pepperdine when Marv showed up again, and I was obviously ecstatic to be a mm -hmm. part of it. 
part of the situation where I was deciding on where to go was uh, Marv was coming back and I think there was no returning starters at Pepperdine and it's 20 minutes from my house so I, I saw the opportunity and uh, I took it and uh, mm -hmm. we had a lot of success. Mm -hmm. And so then take us through the next step. You, you come out of college, what's the time frame for getting to your first national team? Well, uh, actually I was still a undergrad. Uh, I went to Pepperdine for three and a half years and the first three years I played and then I took the fall off and then uh, completed my degree in the spring. But in that fall, uh, I got my exposure to uh, the international game, so to speak, and, and Doug Beal was coaching that team. Mm -hmm. So the U.S. beat Brazil in the finals in 84, and then uh, we had this two-month trip, and it was the longest trip ever, obviously two months yeah. on the road. Two weeks in Korea and two weeks in Japan. This is back when it was uh, cups. So right. it was the Korea right. Cup, Japan Cup, and then we went uh, down to Brazil uh, for two weeks and we played Brazil uh, and it was considered the rubber match because of the pool play and then the finals mm -hmm. and then okay who's the better team mm -hmm. so there's a lot of support for it down there so uh, actually part of that story is we were there for two weeks Korea two weeks Japan and then we got to stay in one day in LA and then we <laughs> had to kind of get back on the plane and wow. take off again uh, but anyways uh, after um, Brazil uh, we went with Brazil to the East Coast and did a nine-stop uh, trip across the United States. And the difficult part to that was uh, the eighth match against Brazil coming across the States was in Los Angeles again. The final one was in Sacramento. Nobody wanted to get on the plane yeah. for the ninth <laughs> match. So that was my exposure uh, introduction to uh, uh, the national team. And I should have asked you before, I meant to ask you with the, in the college days, Always a setter? Well, six twos six, were popular yeah. back then. So you got, and, you got uh, the swing. I got to, in those three years, I set with uh, three different setters. So we've got to talk about the 88 games. And, and as I'm going back, I was looking at video, I'm reminded of a back injury, I think it was, our down 0-2 to Argentina in pool play and Jeff Stork mm -hmm. off the bench. You know, obviously, uh, we have a lot of good players, and uh, we were the best team in the world at the mm -hmm. time. And, uh, you know, Ricky Ludis did a terrific job. Um, you know, he's a great setter. Um, I hurt my back in the friendly matches coming over mm -hmm. uh, against Japan. And uh, one play happened, I tweaked my back, and I didn't play for about two weeks. Um, but my opportunity came up when we were down, as you said, 0-2 uh, against Argentina. I think we were down in the third set, mm -hmm. so the prospect uh, was not looking good at that point. So Marv made the change. Uh, I think I came in and, and served right off the bat, and I think we went on a 5-0 uh, a or 6-0 run at that point. And then, obviously, I was the hero of that one. But again, the, the uh, you know we had a very good team, yeah. and. Uh, that was a, a fun time for me anyways. And when you listen to the commentators in all those match, matches, they're talking about this point scoring when you're serving. You had Buck, Timmons, and Karai, I think, were, were, were blocking. I mean, it was fantastic point scoring. And I was when smart we, enough to keep yeah, the ball in on the serve. When we had traditional <laughs> scoring back then, so, you know, and, it's, and yeah. it's hard to get those points. So that was something that jumped out. Tell, tell me about Antonov. Hard not to see him on the screen. You know, he had a great serve, great blocker, had a whip for an arm. Um, and he was difficult to stop and uh, I think that that Soviet team was uh, very good there was a little bit of a mix of old and new they had Zaitsev there uh, who was a backup setter Losev um, but that team was uh, you know we had battled with them for you know two to three years leading up to the 88 games and uh, Antonov was a big part of that mm. your, your lineup you know uh, was memorable you had Buck and Partey you got Severlick and, and Karch passing and swinging. Obviously, mm -hmm. you and Timmons, and you got Sato, which really had a terrific role coming off the bench late in games. Tell me about the chemistry on that team. Um, the chem obviously, we have a lot of respect for each other. Uh, what we accomplished, I think, was uh, not unique, but certainly special at the time. Um, we had intense practices, <laughs> and uh, it was fierce. <laughs> So there was a lot of respect. There was a common goal, but uh, at times it was difficult. 
Um, but getting back to the chemistry and the, uh, the, the systems that we used, there wasn't a lot of change between 84 and 88. Everybody knew exactly what we were going to do. They just couldn't stop yeah. it. And uh, I think we we're, in many ways, that precise. Uh, and, you know, we won a gold medal. Yeah, obviously a great memory. What about uh, outside of the court at that Olympic Games? A, a favorite memory just from the whole experience? You know, the, the, uh, I love uh, events like the Olympics, the Pan American Games, uh, where there's multi-events. There's other athletes in the village. Um, I like watching other elite mm. athletes at their sport of choice. Uh, it's fun to try to analyze and figure out why they're so good. Um, that, that's what I enjoy about the Olympics mm. or the Pan American Games, but uh, each Olympics that I played in were quite special. Mm. So then you go on to play a little bit professionally in Italy, and you do some of the four-man beach game. Tell me about some of the challenges and the highlights of that time of your life. You know, La Bella Vita was uh, the, probably the best volleyball uh, part of my life. Um, obviously, national team is an honor uh, to represent your country, uh, but Italy was fun, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a lot of diversity there. Uh, we got to play a lot of other, um, you know, uh, players from other countries. Uh, I was fortunate enough to play on most of the, or a lot of the good teams, uh, so the players that we were attracting were top quality. Uh, we won a lot. Um, but just the lifestyle. I think one of the things that also for me was it was a transition between uh, being a, only a volleyball player and that's uh, into becoming a father. Mm. And uh, two of my children were born over there, so that's part of the reason why it's so special mm. for me. Um, loved the people over there. They knew how to live and live <laughs> well. And it was just an exciting time for wow. my wife and me. Wow. So you've gone on to coach now for over 10 years with a women's program at Cal State Northridge. What was the transition like then from, from the playing, primarily playing, to coaching? Uh, quite difficult, to be quite honest. I, I think uh, players and coaches think differently. And uh, there was a, 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 a transition period for me. I, I actually went in as, as an assistant coach at the University of New Mexico for one year with mm. uh, Laurel Brassie. Yeah, Laurel. And, um, uh, and it was an eye-opener, you know, you can't just say do it like this. Mm. Uh, you have to teach the skill. And I think for an athlete, uh, there's a process of learning how to teach. Mm. And so that was the, the, the biggest transition for me mm. or the challenge. Uh, and also tactically, you know, mm. I, I was used to such a high level, you know, yeah. just <laughs> jump, turn, <laughs> face that way, hit that way. Uh, it doesn't happen yeah. with, uh, you know, certain levels of, uh, of players. So you have to teach to what you have mm. and you got to teach a lot. Mm. You seem to have found a home there. Yes, Cal State Northridge is, is a good place for me. Uh, my son went there, or goes there, and uh, he's actually working with me right now as my data volley person. Oh, so he has know. one more semester, and I'm putting him to work. Yeah. So, so tell a little bit more about that, your kids playing volleyball. I know, you know he played uh, last year. Did he get done last year? Yeah, he finished his eligibility. Uh, he's my oldest. Uh, he was the one that was born in Parma. Um, you know, he finished uh, his eligibility last spring. He has one more semester. Setter. Uh, setter. Uh, all they're three all of my set, children are setters. setters. <laughs> and uh, Daniel, uh, my mid second son, middle child, is uh, at the University of Irvine. He won a national championship last year, and I'm very proud of him. And uh, my daughter goes to Cal Poly Pomona, and she's a freshman. Mm -hmm. And they all, you know, love the game. Tell us about the game changing. You know, we were chatting a little bit before from just when you go back and watch 1988, it's like, well, where's the libero? Because we're so used to seeing that now. Y you experienced a lot of change as a player in the game. You certainly now have gone uh, as a coach and seen rules change. What are the highlights? What do you like about the changes? And maybe where do you see the sport going in the future? Whew, that's a loaded yeah, question. I know. <laughs> uh, certainly the, uh, the history of it, I mean, it goes back to not being able to block over the net. Right. Uh, the let serve is certainly different. Uh, being able to receive overhand is huge. The mm -hmm. scoring is huge. Mm -hmm. The games now don't last nearly as long. You know that you're going to end. <laughs> and uh, um, styles have changed a lot. Uh, not only are the, the rules have changed, but I think the athletes are changing. They're much more powerful, I think, than they were in the past. Um, you know, there's just a lot that's happened. Where it's going to go, uh, that's a great question. It's going to take a sharper mm -hmm. mind than mine to figure <laughs> that out. But, uh, you know, I've heard of 
things like landing lines as opposed to takeoff yeah. lines. You know, not blocking or getting to the ball at any point is, uh, is not a violation. Mm -hmm. So anything that's over the net is, is playable. You don't have to wait for the setter to mm -hmm. touch it, things like that. But um, I'll be curious to see which mm -hmm. way it goes. Yeah. It, so you're recruiting now. You, you've had a lot of teammates. You've played against a lot of great players. You're out there recruiting. What are you looking for? You know, the funny answer for me is Queen Kong. Obviously, yeah. I coach women, so it's yeah. Queen Kong. Um, you know, I want uh, good all-around players. Uh, big and good is better than small and yeah. good, but they have to be good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I want players who can see the game uh, and, you know, play a, a, a multifaceted type of game. Uh, you know, but again, I need somebody to put the ball to yeah. the floor. But uh, you know, coaching's fun. It's yeah. it's a little bit of a puzzle. Yeah. Just a couple more questions. Going back to your playing days, you kind of had Karch Karai in his prime, I think, in many ways, at least for the indoor game. And I and I know I've heard him interviewed talk about you know a highlight was certainly '88 because he committed four years of his life to that along with his mm -hmm. teammates. What was it like playing with him? Well, there's so many great stories about Karch. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, uh, he excelled um, in everything. I don't, are there <laughs> other people with three gold medals? <laughs> yeah, um, so. I'm not so sure. <laughs> you know, one of the stories I like to share about Karch is in his intensity and his work ethic is uh, he was an avid, uh, hey, he was a beach player, yeah. and who would have thought he got a gold, gold medal? But uh, Marv, uh, during our training in the spring, would not give him any time off to do the beach. So we trained from... Um, Monday through Friday for uh, four hours a day and then we'd go lift in the afternoon and if he wanted to play beach which typically early in the season is back in Florida he would have to fly out on a red eye to get to the tournament play Saturday Sunday and then be in the gym on Monday he had six tournaments in a row so if you can imagine this at the level he was playing at he played 45 days in a row Enough said. Yeah, enough said. And, uh, you know, that, that, a there's, there's a few other stories <laughs> like that, but th that's one of my favorites. It's good to have that one captured. That's amazing. So you're here this weekend. It's obviously great having you out here. You're joining some teammates uh, in the Hall of Fame. How does it feel being inducted into the Volleyball Hall of Fame? It's super. I mean, it, obviously, it's an honor. And, uh, you know, there's so many great players. And to be selected for the cream of the crop, I think, is... Uh, you know, something truly special. Uh, you know, I, I'm happy with my career. I thought I did a lot of good things, mm -hmm. but to have this on top of it, I, I think is, uh, there's little words that can actually describe the pride that, mm -hmm. you know, I feel about being inducted. Well, it's great having you here. I've enjoyed having this chance to talk with you, Jeff. Congratulations on your award. We've been speaking with Jeff Stork, Volleyball Hall of Fame, Class of 2012. This is Volleyball in Perspective, and I'm your host, Joel Daring. Thank you for watching.